2025 has become a critical year for the Irkut MC-21 program in the Russian aviation industry, as it represents the technical resilience of domestic aircraft manufacturing and the establishment of a comprehensive industrial cooperation network, both domestically and internationally. The Nizhny Novgorod aircraft plant, Sokol, is the focal point of this development. This facility, which has a rich history of combat aircraft production, is currently responsible for a critical civilian project, the series production of underfloor compartments for the MC-21-310. This symbolic transition from fighters to airliners shows the Russian industry's adaptation to evolving priorities and the importance of directing advanced aerospace expertise toward the long-term success of the nation's premier civil aviation initiative. The official announcement from Sokol marked the beginning of one of the most crucial production processes of the MC-21. The plant has initiated the assembly of the underfloor cargo and systems bay sections of the MC-21-310 for the first time. This structural unit is essential for the integration of systems and the strength of the next-generation narrowbody. Unlike less demanding fuselage subassemblies, the underfloor compartment is one of the most demanding and quality-sensitive elements of an aircraft structure, as it houses critical conduits for hydraulics, fuel lines, electronics, and environmental control ducts. The accomplishment is not only the assembly of parts that have already been delivered from other sites, but also the establishment of a dedicated production base with specialized tooling, fixtures, and trained personnel capable of reproducing this module at a serial production rate. The strategic confidence with which the Russian aviation leadership has integrated Sokol into the MC-21 program is what makes this milestone remarkable. The plant promptly entered mass production planning, rather than limiting itself to experimental or prototype runs. This move recognizes its extensive experience in metal machining, assembly discipline, and quality control, which has been honed through decades of MiG fighter production, including MiG-31 interceptors and MiG-29 enhancements. Now, Moscow is placing high expectations on a civil product that must embody those same qualities in order to compete with Boeing's 737 MAX and Airbus's A320 Ineo. The manufacturing procedure is divided into three distinct stages. Sokol had already mastered most of the detail part production during the first stage, including machined fittings, brackets, and minor load-bearing elements. The second stage, currently in progress, involves complete assembly of the cargo compartment, including alignment, fastening, and system integration. The third stage will involve full localization, which Sokol is preparing for, with in-house production of large fuselage panels, hydraulic and fuel system lines, and conditioning system interfaces. The plant has already acquired new machine tools, advanced welding equipment, and composite handling devices to achieve this. Progressive localization is essential in the sanctions-era landscape, as Russia seeks independence in aerospace supply chains. Another layer of resilience comes from parallel production. Underfloor compartments of the MC-21 will be produced both at Aviastar in Ulyanovsk and at Sokol. This guarantees faster build rates and prevents bottlenecks. Sokol alone intends to manufacture up to 24 sections annually after updated type certification. In comparison to the overall production target of 72 aircraft annually by the early 2030s, this shows how dependent the industry is on every node in the cooperation chain. Years of consistent orders will ensure Sokol's economic security and technological relevance. The new philosophy of Russian aviation is symbolized by Sokol's role, which extends beyond this assignment. Previously, the nation's strategy focused mainly on combat aviation, with civil aircraft limited to a few Soviet-era design bureaus. Since 2014, the focus has shifted to civil diversification. Plants such as Sokol, Irkutsk, Eviastar, and Voronezh are now key contributors to programs like the Superjet Nu, 2214, L-114 and MC-21, regardless of military contract fluctuations. The MC-21 
once seen as just another regional attempt at an A320 class competitor, has become a national flagship program. 2025 is a year of consolidation, with serial production readiness, supplier synchronization, and international cooperation all converging. Earlier this year, production facilities in Irkutsk, the primary final assembly center, were expanded. The Irkutsk Aviation Plant is refining the serial assembly line for the MC-21-310 while stockpiling fuselage sections, wings, and empennage units. Throughout 2025, the integration of domestically produced composite wings from Aerocomposite in Yulianovsk has been a major focus. These wings are being incorporated into both flight test aircraft and production stock units. The year also saw continued deliveries of PD-14 engines designed specifically for the MC-21. At least 24 PD-14s have been allocated for near-term builds, with United Engine Corporation confirming regular production. The PD-14 ensures full program autonomy, unlike earlier dependence on PW-1000G geared turbofans that sanctions blocked. Engineers also confirmed development of the PD-14M, which has a higher thrust margin, paving the way for heavier MC-21 versions in the late 2020s. Other Russian facilities have joined production. Kazan institutions now handle avionics and cabin system integration, while Voronezh Aircraft Plant continues fuselage panel production for both 214 and MC-21. This contrasts with the 2010s, when her cuts carried most of the load. Certification is at a key stage in 2025. The baseline MC-21-310 with PD-14 has Russian certification, but incremental trials added features such as improved environmental control, avionics software, and fire containment systems. These are essential before series deliveries, planned for 2026-2027 to airlines like Rossia, Red Wings, and Aeroflot. The PD-14-equipped MC-21 has also undergone high-altitude and cold-weather testing, ensuring reliable performance across Russia's climate. Trials simulated engine starts, hydraulic operations, and cabin pressurization under extreme cold in Yakutia and Krasnoyarsk. The MC-21 order book is supported by state agreements. Aeroflot alone has more than 200 MC-21s in its renewal plans. Leasing company Avia Capital Service ensures distribution to carriers. Though limited foreign sales are being discussed with Iran and Egypt, Russian airlines will remain the foundation of production. The Ministry of Industry and Trade expects MC-21 production to replace retiring Airbus and Boeing fleets in Russia and support moderate exports to Eurasian markets by the early 2030s. A notable development is Russian-Belarusian cooperation. Minsk-based enterprises are now supplying subsystems and components. The Belarusian aviation concern 558 ARs and others are producing avionics modules, wiring harnesses, and hydraulic parts. The Minsk automobile plant is also building transport trolleys and assembly equipment for MC-21 sections. Belarus's participation is strategic. With Western electronics restricted, allied sources are vital. Belarus's experience with MiG and Su aircraft avionics, radar, and electrical repairs is now integrated into MC-21 production. Minsk views its role as both industrial and geopolitical, strengthening ties with Moscow. In conclusion, the story of MC-21 production in 2025, with Sokol as a central new player, reflects the transformation of Russia's civil aviation industry into a sanctions-resilient enterprise. The MC-21 is moving from concept to production reality, supported by Irkutsk, Aerocomposite, PD-14 supply, and certification progress. Belarus's role adds both practical and geopolitical strength. Despite Western dominance in global aviation, Russia is building a sustainable civil aircraft program, and facilities like Sokol are transitioning from interceptors to airliners, shaping the future of Russian aviation. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, please take our channel membership, which is very affordable, to encourage us.